you, you can't see it. You can't see that I'm wearing a tool belt right here. In fact, that tool belt, it's, it's so big with so many tools, like if you can imagine a builder, that I also have those suspenders to keep it up so it doesn't fall down. And on those suspenders, there's more tools. They're all over the place. These tools here that you can't see, I got through doing things like this or studying in school, working and living life. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my path in these tools. But before I do that, a couple things about tools themselves. Now, some of these are self-evident. Number one, you have to have it before you can use it. It's hard to pound a nail without a hammer. You have to have the hammer first, right? You got to have that tool right there. You know that place the hammer goes right here on a tool belt. Okay, you, got, you have to have the tool. The second thing is you need some understanding of how to use the tool. It's hard to pound a nail if you don't know how to use that hammer, right? So some, some understanding and some mastery of the tool. An interesting thing about tools though is that if you use one like a screwdriver, like I got my screwdriver and I screw a screw, I learned how to use that tool. It's not so hard to go to a screw gun, you know? Not such a big leap, kind of same thing, but a different tool. And from there, it's actually not hard to go to a drill because that's kind of the same thing. And from there, not hard to do a drill press, right? So tools kind of, you learn one, you kind of learn how to use another. You learn a piece of software, you kind of know how to use another one, right? And the last interesting thing about tools is that the kind of more you have on the tool belt and up here on your suspenders, the more stuff you can do that you want to do. That's why a builder has all these tools. They're like, hey, can you go pound that nail? Let me see. Oh, yeah. I got my hammer right here. I can do that. And the more tools you have, the more other people will say, hey, can you go do this for me? Yeah, I can do that. I have the tool. So when your school called up and said, Chris, can you come and talk to students about career path? I went like, yeah, 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 I can do that. I can come. Now, if somebody called me up and said, can you go and do, can you have a little uh, neonatal neurosurgery down at the hospital? I'd be, I don't got that one. I'm sorry, I don't have it. I can't do it. So that's the kind of nature of tools, right? Now, let me tell you about my path and the tools that appear on my tool belt. First is to say, I grew up in this tiny little town in Minnesota, just a little bit bigger than your town. And show of hands, I'm not going to ask anybody to answer. Show of hands, National Geographic magazine, you know what I'm talking about? Just quick show of hands. Next show of hands, does anybody here come from a home or know somebody whose house has all of the National Geographics from like 1950 onward? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That's how I grew up. My, mine was one of those houses, every National Geographic from 1956 onward. So one tool that I got in my tool kit as a kid was curiosity. I looked in all of those National Geographics, I got kind of curious about the world. So there it is, there's curiosity right there. Also grown, growing up in a small town, some other tools that I got when I look at my tool belt are things like respect, honesty, hard work. These are things I believe I gained because I grew up in that town and they're there on my tool belt. So from high school, one thing I had in my mind when I was, you seniors who are sitting out there, maybe some of you have in the same mind, same idea, how far away from here can I get? That was a thought on my mind. It's not everybody has that thought, but I did. How far away can I get? So I went far away to university. And when I went far away to university, I added a couple more tools on my toolkit. Now, thanks to that little curiosity tool that I already had, I developed a kind of interest and love of academia. And I remember my mom telling me when I was a kid, oh, I loved college. It was so great to learn. And I was like, are you crazy? School, come on. But I did. I gained a, a love for studying and learning. Another thing I got when I went to school was I went so far away that there were no kids from my hometown or kind of my place. 
So I met all these other kids from all around the United States and all around the world. And a tool that went right about here was like, we're different and we have different things. And guess what? When somebody says cheese, they don't mean just Velveeta. Because when I grew up, it was like cheese meant Velveeta. And I go out to school, it's like, no, cheese is like cheddar and provolone and all these other things, right? But anyway, I, I learned all about the differences of people. I finished school and guess what I do? I go to a high school to teach. So I, I go to a high school, and in that high school, I add some more tools to the tool belt. One thing I did was I dealt with all of the foreign exchange kids. Do you have foreign exchange students here in this school? There's one. Where are you from? Italy. Very welcome. So I had a group of foreign exchange kids that I took care of. That, and, and, and thanks to you know, kind of learning about other kids in university, I had a better tool to deal with the foreign exchange kids. Another thing I learned in that school was, that was like my first adult job. How do you stand your ground as an adult when everybody's telling you one thing and how do you stand your ground and do something else? I think that related back to this one, this kind of respect and understanding thing I got as a kid. So I, I, I learned another thing as a teacher, how hard it is to teach. And so my respect to all of the teachers here, I found that was not for me. So my path led me to the US Peace Corps and I became a Peace Corps volunteer in a place called Kyrgyzstan. And that place, by the way, is almost geographically as far away from my hometown as you can get. And so I was like, yeah, now I'm really far away. As a Peace Corps volunteer, I'm adding other tools on the tool belt like crazy. Importantly is, in the past, I had these tools of helping foreign exchange kids and learning about people who are not like me, but now I'm the foreigner. And how do I deal in a new culture? And how can I live and work in a village all the way around the world where I don't speak the language? You know, that's an important tool. And so I, I learned that one. Two other tools I got in Peace Corps that are useful was how do you deal with ambiguity? Right? Check this out. Anybody, you can just shout out the answer. A squared plus B squared equals... Where did you learn that? In a book, right, that, that, that's it, that's the Pythagorean theorem. You learn that, right? Okay, how do you build a community center in a village of 200 Kyrgyz people? Go, go ahead. Oh, yeah, exactly. There's no like textbook answer for that one, right? It's, amb it's ambiguous, it's difficult. You have to kind of deal with ambiguity. Another, the final thing I learned as a Peace Corps volunteer is how to take initiative. In a group of people, you may already know this, that when you're doing a project with your schoolmates, it's like, okay, everybody, you know, what are we gonna do next? And everybody stands there like, you know. But then one brave soul says, I know what to do, let's do this. Somebody takes the initiative and moves things along. I put that in the toolbox, in my toolbox. After I finished Peace Corps, I started working as a humanitarian aid guy if you will, and there, my bio is down there if you want to learn any more about that. But I went all around the world living and working in conflict, in war and natural disaster, right? And so now the tools are like, I'm getting crazy tools all over the place because I'm working in these insane places, doing these really interesting things, and I'm, I'm learning all kinds of stuff about how to deal. The most important tools that I'm getting at that point, though, were tools about humans, like, the purpose of our work is about people, not about finishing the project or ticking the box or writing the email or finishing the tweet. It's about people. And almost everything we do as people ought to be about people. So I put that in the toolbox. And so I, I end up doing that for, for years and years and I'm get, getting all of these tools and I'm feeling pretty well tooled up. Like I said, when I got the call here, I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that. You know, I'm, I'm not a public speaker. That's not what I do for a living. That's not my job, but yeah, I'm happy. I like to talk to students. I was a teacher. I got some tools there. I've had to talk with government ministers on you know, foreign policy. I got that. Okay, I can do these things. So here I am, right? These are all my tools. So I wanted to share with you some of those ideas that you can, you know, you're tooling yourself up here in school, not just in the academics, but in your sports, extracurriculars, and just life. You're getting these tools. And those are some tools that really suited me well. Now, before I wrap up, I'm gonna share a, the final set of tools. And it's like this. 
So like you have a hammer and then you have a pile driver, right? Or you have a spade or you have a backhoe, you know? One is small and useful, the other is big, powerful, and extremely useful. The bigger and more powerful, the more effect you have, but the harder it is to use. So here, here when I, whenever I'm asked, and I'm asked often, like, Chris, you know, of all the places you've lived and worked, what are some things that really are helpful when you look in, in a professional life, and what kinds of tools do you need? Well, for this, it really doesn't matter what you do. You don't have to be a humanitarian aid guy. You don't have to be a Peace Corps volunteer. But here are three things that you can kind of take to the bank. I call them, this is for you, hopefully, an, an easy way to remember the three C's. I make it super easy. Number one, when I think about the people I worked with, and I think about who really stood out, like what matters, what skill really matters, there seems to be three. If you can do one of them, great. Two of them better, three of them, you're an all-star in everybody's book, practically. And you can do as you please. Now, don't confuse doing what you please with being economically successful. Maybe that's what you want. More power to you. Please do that. Or maybe you want to be celebrity successful. That's great. Do that. Um, but what I'm talking about isn't necessarily one of those things. It can be any of them. The first C in the, in the toolbox, in the big toolbox, remember, this is like the backhoe. This isn't the shovel. It's, can you create something? Can you be creative? Can you bring something into work, life, or otherwise that is not the same thing that we all know and do? Can you create something and be creative? That is a certain skill. Now, if you're sitting there like, oh man, I, don't, I can't do that, good news. You actually can. It's like any tool. It takes some doing. You have to pick it up and use it to master it. But you can do it. Creativity is one. The second thing, the second C in the skill is, can you convene people? Can you bring people together? Because there are very, very few and increasingly fewer things you can do that just involve you. Just you. There are some things you can do, of course. And I'm not saying you have to do everything with a big group of people. But generally speaking, our society our planet is moving towards us working together in different ways. So can you convene a group of people? Can you find the right people to come in at the right time to do the right thing? That's an incredible skill. And people who do it are really quite, quite amazing. The last thing is the hard thing. I mean, of course, I'm saving the hardest thing for last, right? And that is, can you complete it? Can you finish the job? Because many, many, many are the people who start things. Many people. Great idea. I get the right people together and then <laughs> run out of gas. You don't get the thing done. So few are the people who can drive something all the way through and complete it and get it done. And again, that can be anything. That's not some big multi-zillion dollar job thing. That's anything you do to simply complete the job be done with your group. Those are the three C's. Those are the big powerful tools. They're, they don't fit even on the tool bag here. They're, they're big. They're, they're, they're somewhere maybe in the backpack. I'm just going to wrap up by, by saying that I do work for the Montana World Affairs Council. And what we do is we work in schools and communities to help Montanans understand what's going on in the world and why does it matter. Because what's going on, most people can know who, you know, m most people, not everybody, but most people have a smartphone in their pocket and you can zip up CNN.com to find out what's going on. But why does it matter to you is another thing. And interestingly here in Montana, if you're the kind of person who's into the international world like me, Montana is a hugely internationalized place. Many people don't think so, but our base economy here, the agricultural economy, is in a global market. So actually, if you really want to know the details of the China trade deal, you can talk to an academic at the university, or you can talk to a farmer who lives it every day. And believe me, Montanans really know this stuff. So um, we do programs for students like yourself, uh, schools all over the place. I come and speak, or you come and do our programs. More information is right down there if you like it.